Okay, hydrocephalus, kind of the ground zero of treatment of spina bifida, the central problem. And it is, it is really the most important problem from a neurosurgical perspective. If you wanna take care of people, take good neurosurgical care of people with, uh, with spina bifida, attend to their hydrocephalus. About traditionally 75 to 80% of people who have spina bifida end up needing treatment with a, typically a shunt, but the ETV CPC option um, is increasingly used um, and, is, and can be effective for a significant number of people with, with myelomeningocele. Typically, most children will have two to four shunt revisions uh, during the course of their life. Um, and, and that, um, but many of these, many of these um, principles are being challenged. The, the MOMS trial was able to drive that 70 to 85% of needing treatment for hydrocephalus down to just over half, 55 to 65% needed treatment. And so it's really been an issue of whether or not, uh, it's really been a challenge to pediatric neurosurgery, whether or not shunts could be reduced. And Robin Bowman and uh, Dominic Thompson uh, at Chicago and at London, respectively, both said, yeah, we can tolerate larger ventricles. We can do a little more local wound care. Let's see if we can tolerate these things and drive our incidence of shunts down. And they were able to drive it down to kind of 60 to 65, maybe 70% range, okay? ETV CPC, that appears to be being uh, effective. It's clearly not effective for all the patients with spina bifida. So the, the, it's necessary to identify the predictors. It's not a panacea where it's gonna make shunts completely go away. There's the ETV CPC. There are now predictors that for success, J. Reva Cameron's paper um, clearly showed uh, that myelomeningocele did reasonably well, much better than intraventricular hemorrhage. The IVH kids with prematurity don't do as well, but the myelomeningocele kids can actually do as well as the folks with aqueductal stenosis. And that's, those are amongst the best performers. So this is definitely a, um, a very worthwhile thing to consider. And I know you guys have, have heard or will hear talks on ETV CPC because it's so worthy of time and it's probably worthy of a talk itself. So we sent out, we did this care management uh, protocol. This is a paper we wrote a few years back about what, how people would choose to, uh, to treat various clinical scenarios. And just suffice it to say that despite teaching, despite significant uh, concordance of opinion on the way things ought to be treated, there still remains some variation uh, within practice as far as how aggressively people uh, would treat various clinical scenarios. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.